In the spring of 1971, tensions between the U.S. and China were at an all-time high. But at the World Tennis Table Championships in Nagoya, Japan, an All-American ping pong player, Glenn Cohen, boarded the Chinese team bus after missing his. This one incident may have prevented a war, a decision that may have changed the fate of the whole world. This incident started the ping pong diplomacy. Before we get on to how it happened, we need to have some background first. Ping pong has had a long history of being political. However, Montague started this when he wanted to smuggle communist culture to the West through ping pong. Ping pong players were slightly political celebrities. When governments wished for players to lose or win, they had to obey. If they didn't, they were shamed and had serious consequences. Before the table tennis championship in Nagoya, the US and China had no previous diplomatic relation, as if they didn't know each other existed. The ping pong game was a perfect catalyst for peace, and China intended to use it. On the other hand, President Nixon understood the Cold War. Two enormous communist countries, the Soviet Union and the People's Republic of China. They shared the same border, but even though they shared the same political philosophy, they were not comfortable neighbors. Nixon thought that if he could build a relationship in China, he could leave the USSR out of the picture, isolated and alone. After Glenn Cohen's exhibition match, he went to board his team bus, and this is where the speculations start. Many say he missed his team bus, others say he boarded the Chinese bus on accident, but there's one thing for sure, he boarded a bus. Well, he did that, but like... Glenn Cohen, in one way or another, single-handedly saved the U.S. and China's relation. I mean, obviously China had some part in it, but he did more than just board a bus. After he boarded that bus, the relations between the two countries just skyrocketed. The president of China invited the U.S. team to Beijing, then Mao Zedong met with Richard Nixon, the first time ever a president had met with a Chinese leader. Richard Nixon's plan was working perfectly. Or so we thought. Around five months before ping pong diplomacy began, the premier of China, Zhou Anlai, was determining how to create peace with the US. He saw the ping pong championships in Nagoya approaching fast and thought, what better way to settle world peace than through a table tennis match? He went on to invite the Americans to a match and well, we know how the story goes from there. The American players were invited to sightsee in Beijing and Around a year later, Nixon met with Mao Zedong and created the Shanghai Comité, where both sides pledged for further diplomacy between the two world powers. A few years later, Jimmy Carter goes on to create the One China Policy, and the Vice President of China visits the U.S. to have diplomatic talks with the President. They now recognize one another as having full diplomatic relations. All along, China knew they couldn't trust the Soviets for much longer, and as the window closed for diplomatic talks with the U.S., China stepped in and made it happen. Nixon may have never been the one to have all the cards in his hand, but China did after all. So why does this all matter? What's the long term in all of this? Well, if diplomacy between the US and China had not happened, this would not be known as the Cold War. It would have been known as the Nuclear War. Before this diplomacy, Everyone was on the edge of their seats, anticipating something big. The truth is, these ping pong players had the world in their hands, and diplomacy from 1971 still shows today, as trade treaties between the two countries have appeared, and diplomatic talks and visits to the country still show up to this day. No one would truly know what would have happened if it weren't for this one act of kindness and peace between the countries, but it would not have been pretty. This event of ping pong diplomacy and its importance cannot be stressed enough. Not only could it have prevented all that war, but it also in a way helps us have a remembrance of peace and diplomacy between these countries. And if the two countries ever come toe to toe again, who knows? Maybe a simple game of ping pong could solve it all. <laughs>